I already talked about, I don't know if you guys remember, about three months ago, I introduced to you guys that the airport of Baltimore is going to start implementing face scanning biometrical scans to replace ID cards and passports for their faster processing time at the airports. But it was just a test basis at Baltimore Airport. But apparently since that time, this has expanded now to, let me see how many it says here. It says that the TSA is preparing to expand its controversial facial recognition program to around 430 airports over the next several years. But at this current time, uh, it doesn't say the number. Let me just count them because they give me all the airports. There's Atlanta, Baltimore, Cedar Rapids, Idaho, Cincinnati, Columbus, Dallas, Denver, Detroit, Gulfport, Honolulu, Jackson, Mississippi, Las Vegas, Los Angeles, Miami, Nashville, New Orleans, Oklahoma City, Phoenix, Richmond, Salt Lake City, San Francisco, San Jose, San Juan, and Washington State. These are currently airports that are utilizing face scanning technology right now. But this week, an interesting thing manifested. There was a senator. His name is Senator Jeff Merkley. He was taking a flight, and when he got to the TSA, they told him that he needed to scan his face at one of these recognition machines. And if he doesn't, there's going to be a delay if he wants to go about it the traditional way. This was already advised to him before he got to the front of the line. When he finally got to the front of the line, there was no delay. He gave him his ID. He didn't want to take the face scan, and he went through. And so he thought this was highly suspect. They were already preparing people, so their mindset was, I'm going to have a delay. So it's almost like indoctrination to tell you, you better participate because you're going to have your flight delayed if you don't participate in this biometrical face scan. But when you finally go up there, there's going to be no delay if you refuse. But they want to indoctrinate you, create that fear, so you just go ahead and comply. And so this was, this was actually interesting because if they're doing this to a senator, <laughs> what do you think they're going to be doing to you? And yeah, maybe for him, when he said, no, I don't want to take it, they're like, oh, okay, senator. Yeah, no, no problem. We understand. Because he's a senator. But what are they going to do when it's Joe Schmo? These things are being implemented now. Senators are even being threatened with delay times. The force of biometrical face scanning is reality, and it's coming. TSA themselves has said it's going to happen over 430 airports. Eventually, it's going to just take over regular ID identification. And actually, that's what the spokesman of TSA actually says. So, so it continues on saying, when Mark Lee said no to the face scan at Washington Regal National Airport, he was told it would cause a significant delay. There was no delay when he finally went up to the front. The spokeswoman said that the senator showed his photo ID. The TSA agent cleared him for security, and he went about his way. But what the senator thought was strange was why was he advised ahead of time that if he doesn't comply, there's going to be a delay? Why was that even implied? When policy, TSA policy says there will be no delay. If you don't want to take the face scan, that's okay. There's going to be no delay. But he was advised that there would be one. And so he's not the only person. There has been hundreds of recorded problems with people at TSA telling them there's an issue. So there was this other person that went up to pass security. They rejected the face scan. They got through security and on their way walking to the airplane, TSA pulls them back and says, hold on, we need you to take this face scan. And there is no option. Multiple people are being told if you don't comply, there's going to be delays or there's not an option. Well, what I think is interesting, you know China already has that facial scanning social credit infrastructure. You know, you see, I've seen with those little boxes around their heads and it has like information. Once they implement this face scanning technology, there's going to be nothing for the government not to correlate you with these perfect boxes. And there's too many people, and you would ask yourself, why don't they do it now? Because there's just too many people, and they're spread out over the land. There's too much land. But if everybody goes to the airport at some point, this is perfect. Like, this is a clear HD quality scan. You're right in front of this machine. This ain't no, well, that's not really me. You can't prove it's me because you're zooming in on a CCTV. 
this is you right in the face. This, this is this is legit. And you guys, if you don't know, the FBI actually has a biometrical database. It's called NGL or NLG. And so they're already saving people's biometrical scans. And so at some point, this is going to be the beginning of the infrastructure for America's social credit. I mean, if they're implementing this in China, you already know China is just what we call a case study for the rest of the world. China does things the rest of the world won't do. And then the rest of the world look at China and see how much resistance or compliance is going on. And then the rest of the world makes their decision because China is just the game breaker. They'll, they'll try anything. So this is being propagated now. And what's interesting is what the TSA representative themselves say. So the TSA administrator, David Pekoski, said, eventually we will get to the point where everyone will be required to follow with biometrical scanning across the board because it is more effective and more efficient. So his objective is clear. He's not even hiding. At some point, we're going to get rid of all this ID stuff and everybody's going to have their face scanned. And if you guys want to look up this company, it's called Diginar. They already have a contract with the TSA to deal with this biometrical database. So, Well, I feel like we're not really looking at the full picture here because what this also means, though, because they can't have their cake and eat it at the same time. What that looks like is... If they want to see your face, they, if they want the facial scanning recognition capability, you can't be wearing anything on your face. And I'm not going to invoke the holy name here of what people have been forced to put on their face in the past. But this means that you won't have to be, you won't be forced to put those things on anymore because they, they, they can't. They, if they want you to ride their plane then you, and they want to see your face, then you can't have anything on there. It's going to look real stupid. They say, well, just pull it down real quick and then we'll scan it and then put it back That's on. That's what they say. <laughs> okay, well, there you go. So they're having their cake and they're eating it at the same time, but they can't do it forever because eventually the cake will be gone. Yeah, this data, this this is interesting because I was reading more about this infrastructure. This algorithm can bypass different tattoos, hair structures, uh, makeup. It can create a digital proximity of you, no matter what you have. TSA is telling people, we're not saving this data. As soon as you go up, the algorithm scans your face, verifies it with a digital ID that this is you, and then immediately deletes it. So they're trying to tell you, don't worry, we're not keeping your data. But then in the same voice, this is what the TSA says. TSA says it doesn't retain the details of people's faces. What's called biometrical data, after the comparison is made, Biometrical data is overridden as soon as the next passenger steps up to the queue. And then the technology is turned off at the end of the day. Whatever storage system in there dumps completely. There is no saved images. But the TSA acknowledges that until this week, some of the travelers' biometrical data was collected and sent to the Department of Homeland Security's AI research wing to determine the efficacy of the algorithm that were used. And so, yeah, they're telling you that. And then they have to admit also, yeah, but, you know, there are some people who decided to keep. And it's like, and now you want us to believe that you legitimately aren't keeping no more. TSA is not being quiet. They do want this to propagate, want to replace physical ID. And this is just going to be another way the government says, see, guys, we need to get rid of physical ID. We need digital ID. And it's going to be correlated with biometrical data. This is slowly the beginning of a nationalized social credit system, a surveillance state, the beginning of China and America. And the FBI has already been gathering all this data under the IAFI and the NGI database. Well, what's the difference between this and having your phone? Because your phone is always looking at your face. Your face. We have facial recognition. Like my laptop right now has facial recognition my face when i open it it looks at my face and says oh okay you're the guy because it's third party it's not a government database well, yeah now i guess that would be scary if the government starts saying uh no your access is denied to your own laptop because yeah something. see like right now it works because all our internet is still privately owned like they're let's say you have a cox cable or some internet service provider it's not governmentally owned so it's still not a direct correlation with the internet's infrastructure. Well, but think yet. that's right. Because think about it. We talked about it a couple months ago. Dallas is trying to give everybody free internet. Now, to comply with that free internet, what do you have to do? Is you have to get onto the government's network. 
once you're on the government's network, yes, then they will have an access because you're under their proxy. They will have access to block your internet. And so if there ever is a universal or nationwide free internet and everybody has to use the government as an internet service provider, that's when the government has an on and off switch. They can literally turn off the gateway to the internet to whoever they want to, individual homes, cities, states, whatever. So not only are they going to digitize your currency, they can digitize your access to internet or communication. But what if I just want to go live butt naked on the forest? Sure, you could do that. And, you know, at some point, that might actually be better at some point than living out of this craziness. But <laughs> <laughs> that would actually be living out of craziness. Well, it's at some point. Actually living like some Neanderthal. It may, free more, it may feel more liberating than being isolated inside this digital matrix. Yeah, yeah. it would. Well, it's for a time. <laughs> 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 but anyways, I just want to let you guys know this is happening. So what we were talking about, I thought it was just an implementation that could take 18 to 24 months. That was just a couple of months ago. Now this is full scale. TSA is just blasting it out. That's what I was saying. Like if they cut me out of my laptop, my phone, off the internet, like you're saying, they turn it off because I said something they didn't like, like what Amazon did. Hey, ESG or something against that. Yeah, like what Amazon did to that one guy. Yeah, you said something, which he didn't say at all, but they just said, oh, he, who cares? We're just going to say you did and you can't yeah. sue us. Good luck. If they do that to me, then what else can you do but respect it? And you're just going to have to go live somewhere else. Yeah. Yeah, and, and that's that's what I'm saying. This is why people have to figure out what are you going to do as a solution? What is the nation going to do as a collective to deal with this? Because it seems like it's impossible when you're dealing with the political structure because there's lobbyists everywhere and all these politicians are being bought out. So it doesn't seem like a political pathway is realistic. I'm definitely against a nationalistic agenda. So I, I, don't, I don't care if they really are propagating good ideas or not. It's a dogma that's going to be forced on everybody, and one day it's just going to be a different dogma, and I don't want that. So I'm interested to see what you guys think. What kind of solutions can we come up with to deal with this oncoming, preeminent digital dystopia because it's coming down the pipeline? And all this CBDC talk that I've been trying to tell you guys and all this implementation of the IMF and distributed ledgers, blockchain technology, digital currency, digital identification, digital license plate, digital dancing. It's all just to show that this is real. I mean, they've been talking about this for 20 years, but now it's actually happening. It time's up. They're, they, now they are implementing what they've been talking about. This is like the Simpsons prophecies finally actually happening now. The prophecy time is over. The Simpsons are coming to, they're being resurrected. <laughs> Simpsons are coming back. So anyways, I just wanted to bring that out to you guys. I think it's interesting. TSA is going to be used as the means to force people, I think, to get digital identification.